Because it's about, I don't know, an inch or two deep of rust in there. Why are we taking Hank out? We need to burn more hours. <laughs> we gotta burn those hours up. <laughs> I know. And we wanna go somewhere down around here. So a couple years ago, we decided to buy a boat. How hard can it be, right? And ever since then, there's been lots of unexpected stuff. Some things people don't tell you. Lots of scraping. There's always a boat leak in very confined spaces. Oh well, we won't ever forget to put that plug back in again. And then we started our classes. Come join us in our transition from land to sea. So as part of our basically almost weekly routine, because we get so much seagrass in here, we clean out the strainer again for the AC. So yeah, that's just after like two weeks. Yeah, and since um, strainer got clogged, guess what? I'm gonna have to uh, back flush it again. So here we go with this. Now we're back working the way that it's supposed to. I guess it's uh, both, a, both a blessing and a curse to have an AC. So there you go. So we get back from lunch or dinner and um, we get greeted as soon as we park that somebody was getting ready to call us because our boat may be sinking. And our helpful neighbor said, wait a minute, they're not out of town, they're here because Oliver is in there. So he kind of did a quick walk around, around the outside of the boat and um, he figured, he told the harbor master, don't worry about it, about calling them because they're here. So when we get back from dinner, he saw us coming in and it's super windy. As you can tell, it's probably really loud. Um, but Patrick has um, put all of his tools and most of the weight on the boat on starboard side, which was giving that impression that we were sinking. Once we came in, yeah, it's, what did you say? Listing to starboard? Yeah. So once we came in, we also noticed that our dinghy, Hank, the motor and everything is actually also on the starboard side. So Patrick thought, well, that's a quick way of fixing it. Let's just flip Hank. So we dropped him in the water real quick. So we can just flip him and put the motor and everything. I will help, but... I have my wine. On the opposite side, and hopefully that will level the boat a little bit better. Not that you could see, but Patrick's face is uh huh. Wait, can I... there's Hank. See all these lines down here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got new lines. So we got you our can't. new running rigging up there. You can't see it because it's night, but we'll show you. Yeah. 
Are you doing the John Holmes knot? The John Holmes knot? I can tie a knot in it. That's what you're asking. No, I call this the John Holmes knot. So I had to rebalance out some of the weight. I took yeah. all the tools that I had and I put them down in this locker while we were cleaning up. Mm -hmm. And I didn't distribute them evenly. And I probably have... I have two full two tool bags, so plus we got all our snorkel gear and all that stuff down there. So yeah, we'll have to figure something out. I'll One more to thing to learn: you have to balance your weight. Yeah, but yeah, it looks better. Yeah, I can already tell that we're way more balanced. So we're good. Good job, baby. Yeah, yeah peanut butter jelly. So what are we doing? We are taking Oliver on his first dinghy ride. Why are we taking Hank out? We need to burn more hours. <laughs> I gotta burn those hours up. <laughs> I had to do 10 and I think we had three. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So I feel like a brand new parent when you're going out. I'm like bringing the floaty, the boat hook. Um, of course, all our paperwork and all the stuff, and we just have a lot of stuff. <laughs> I'm sure our load will lighten, but of course, you know, we got radio stuff, PFDs, boat hook, water, fuel, and the pump just in case, because it's the first time we took him out for a long ride, so if anything happens, we to make sure we can pump him back up. We'll be fine. Yeah, we will. As you can see, it is 10:14. We're gonna see how long we can go on a tank of fuel. And that's where we're at right now, and we want to go somewhere down around here. So we're gonna take him out. Hopefully, it'll uh, do good. Get us far enough. We'll check it out as we get going. It's a little rough here because we gotta go slow. As soon as we pick up some speed, we'll uh, be doing much better. Hey, hey. So what are we doing? Uh, so usually we go down this pathway on the sailboat to get gas or whatever, but um, we never been past where it goes too shallow. So since we have to go hang, let's see where it ends. So we're gonna go and uh, explore. Yeah. And plus it was a little rough. We were gonna go out in the middle of the bay. Here. Yeah, it was yeah. too. It was too choppy. Again. Ooh, our first bridge. Oh my god, do we fit? If I had a dollar every time. Where's Riley? <laughs> Maybe we'll see some manatees or something since it's so calm over here. Yeah, so I'm trying to just see what we yeah. see. Go nice and slow and easy and see what we see. Oh, I don't think we fit through there. We're going to rip it. Think so? Yeah, there's there's logs coming out of the... Oh. Okay. But look at that. Yeah, that's log. There's logs coming out. In the only opening, we have to turn around. So we're back from our dinghy ride. Um, a little too rough out there, so we decided to turn around and come back. And um, it just wasn't just wasn't the day for it. The wind was supposed to bud really die down, but it never really did. So it was still really really choppy, and there was a more than quite a few power boats out there cutting close to the shore so the wakes were just making it it's just really uncomfortable and since we didn't really have anything to do we were just trying to get some hours in 
we just took some of the other little um, waterways and stuff like that and just killed some time. So we burned about another hour and a half off of them. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go ahead and put Hank up. I think I pretty much have this down to a science now, which is kind of relieving. <laughs> So here's another tip for you today. So um, while we uh, had Hank up on the davits, a lot of the times we don't take off the uh, outboard because we're just gonna end up putting it back on when we get back and probably do some running around and stuff. So a lot of the times we'll leave the outboard on Hank, as a lot of people do. Um, and you can see it around our marina, a lot of people also do that as well. Because we don't really make any long passages yet, it doesn't really matter to us. So, but. What we did learn from it was is that um, while we were out sailing, sometimes we would catch a wake off of a large power boat who just got a little too close or something like that, and um, or swell or anything. And what was happening is, is that the dinghies, Hanks play out of the water pretty good, but the outboard's hanging down. So um, yeah, so we didn't worry about it that much because we don't see anybody else with their outboards really trimmed up. So. I'm just gonna solve that problem because every time we hit a wake, it would catch the outboard and then snatch against the davits because that's what Hank's tied up to. So, so we're gonna avoid that by now doing this. So now I've trimmed Hank up and if the water gets up this high, we hit a swell that much on a short passage, then uh, yeah, we're gonna be in some serious trouble. Still got him on our angle so we don't have to worry about uh, him filling up with water and having a repeat episode of what we had before and then um, also we uh, will take the outboard off and put it over here when we're not going to be using it so here's your tip for the day all right so we're going to take this old rusted busted piece of junk out of here And then we're gonna see what we can do with it to get it uh, placed today. So, just gonna be pulling all this out and replacing it with our new one. So, yeah, let's get this done. Here's our old anchor. Here's all the clump of rusty mess, whatever you want to call this, that came out with it. About 500 feet of road, it seems like. An old fishing cast net that is completely shot. It was underneath the anchor. Yeah, that's right. It was underneath the anchor. And then this, which was also underneath the fishing net that was underneath the anchor. So, yeah. So I'm gonna be cleaning all of this out because it's about, I don't know, an inch or two deep of rust in there. And then cleaning this out. And I'm sure that that drain down there that you can't even see was probably clogged up and not even working. So, yeah, let's get to it. All right, so I got it all cleaned out. Everything looks like it's good to go. Now I'm just gonna um, go ahead and uh, modify this so that I can get the chain in and um, attach the new anchor. We're gonna be set. So yeah, here we go. Here's a look at uh, our finished product. All nice and clean. Oh yeah, and check it out. I actually have an anchor drain that you can see through. So now I don't have to worry about water building up in there and rusting the chain even more. All right, you ready for this, babe? Yeah. What are we gonna do? We are changing the anchor chain because as you saw 
It's in great condition, the one that we had. <laughs> so we laid out the one that we have in the order that we want to put it in. And now just start trailing it in. Yep. We got 200 feet of new chain. We were gonna put this in with our windlass, our new windlass, but that project's getting put off more and more. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we prioritize the projects on the ones that we need to leave and the ones that we can do while we're on the way. And we already have the windlass and everything. We're gonna install it ourselves. So we're just gonna make sure we have the materials, but we wanna get done the ones, the all the projects that we need to make that are stopping us from leaving. We don't want any more marina glue. We, we wanna head out. We, we need to get started. Exactly. So, all excited right. this this is this and the mass have to get done oh yeah let's not talk about the mass light yet <laughs> Next week, we get to meet a Wookiee. So we were driving around on our dinghy and I found the cutest boat. And the owner is here. And this boat has its own blog. So I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna talk to this gentleman so he can tell you more about it. It's absolutely amazing.